Hi there, my name is Rio, or as down in Melbourne, a lot of people would have known me as Rohit. We have changed the way that we're doing some of our stories and we're turning them into documentaries. And one of the first ones that we're revisiting is the story of Futsal Oz, where me, myself and Hannah Burke sat down with Peter Parthenos and had a discussion about Futsal in Victoria, the success of Serious Futsal and Futsal Oz, and a few other things. In 2022, I had the opportunity to cover women's futsal um, at the series level and we've made a collaboration of different content from the past and here is that. Um, so I'm from Brazil and I've been playing ever since I was five or six. I uh, first started in Western Australia. Okay. Uh, I played a little uh, social futsal in Ballarat um, and then I met Jess Ow actually and she invited me to Moreland's and I, that's how I started in series. I, I'd come back from a knee injury, uh, you know, I would have been about 10, 12 months after an operation, probably be less. So I said, look, I'm just going to go goalkeeper. I was a, I was a field player. I was, yeah. uh, you know, I consider myself, I could play any position anyway. So I said, I'll just go goalkeeper and uh, just ease into it nice and softly. You know, I hadn't played any sport really apart from a little bit of rehab. Yeah. And uh, that was it. At half time, I'm itching. I'm saying I'm getting out of goals. Said, <laughs> and uh, at half time, I said, boys, I'm not staying in goal. Who wants to go goalkeeper? And that was it. Yeah. You know, I kicked a couple of goals. I had a lot of fun. And uh, that was it. I, I saw that this game um, can be taken to the next level. Just before we start our story, I just want to thank everyone that was involved in this piece um, over the last couple of years and for the opportunity to come and talk about their story on camera with me. So I really appreciate that and I hope all of you down in Melbourne are doing well. from you know you know not you know not having anything we had something that uh, excited us so all of a sudden it was zero back to zero again yeah but that's when um, I pretty much got fed up and uh, the, my friend then Evan Robotis, um still my friend now yeah. um, we basically said look you know he, he and he's pretty much his whole family his father were all refereeing at the time I was doing a bit of refereeing mm -hmm. we said why don't we just start our own competition you know and Thank God, uh, my old high school gymnasium was um, uh, was on the chopping block. Uh, they were going to knock it down, and they had no purpose for it in the community. And um, yeah, basically, we lobbied and, and um, we convinced the Department of Human Services uh, to keep it yeah. um, as a multi-use purpose, uh, multi-purpose uh, facility for yeah. for the uh, Moreland community, which is right around here. Yeah, and we convinced them after fourteen months of uh, pretty much uh, to and from and. That's where Futsal Oz started. Futsal Oz started there, part-time, hobby, and uh, before you knew it, um, we had packed it out, and I couldn't, I couldn't work anymore full-time. I had to pretty much take it on full-time. Um, what I enjoy about the sport is probably being around people like this, being around your friends and just the culture as well, seeing everyone around. That's probably my favourite part of playing Futsal. Uh, I think my favourite part about Futsal is that you 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 base you're basically relying on your skills more than anything else like you can't get away with bad touches or anything like that and it's very much about teamwork it's about everyone working together so i love that about it you know just playing futsu and all that and meeting meeting new friends and everything mm -hmm. i've met most of my close friends from futsu so it's been a good experience for me uh, it's brilliant to see that and speaking of meeting new friends did, does that friendship go beyond futsu yeah it does i consider them one of, like my closest friends outside of soccer as well. Futsal throughout its history has its ups and downs and it was no further evident it's when it was on national television and broadcasted all around the country and then it came to a period where it was on life support and it was just being held up by a couple of people playing with a tennis ball on a basketball court. So Futsal's had its one crazy journey. But ultimately, end of the day, it's always survived in some form or some format, thanks to the people that are super passionate about it. Left on myself and Evan, who um, we got in, 
got in in the early stages was that you need some sort of an elite structure um, to to accommodate for people or players that want to take it to the next level because we had the juniors coming in mm-hmm. learning how to you know improve their skills uh, and we also had um, you know you know people that just want to play socially yeah but we wanted to cater for the high level skill players that you know um, wanted to wanted to play at a higher level and albeit on and I guess my best experience um, was SFA um, back, I think it was like 2019. Um, so yeah, um, just we ended up coming second um, in that tournament. Um, everything about it was pretty good, like the quality of players that we had. We had Christina Cahal, Jesse Al, Margot, um, like French international, just an amazing player. I think everyone knows Margot. Um, <laughs> No, it was just a very good um, tournament, and yeah, it was great. Yeah, no, it would have been. I, I, I remember that it was, uh, it was nationwide, and there were players from all across the country that came down. Yeah, we had um, a couple of girls that had come down from New South Wales. One of my friends, um, Shan Day, who plays at East Coast um, Futsal yep. up in um, Port Macquarie, she came down. Um, there was something. There was girls from WA, um, Queensland. Yeah, it was like a really good quality competition. Two. Serious Futsal has always aimed to offer a level of highly competitive matches for individuals who have ambitions to go on beyond where they're currently at and also cater for clubs that have dreams of national championships and showing that they're best in the country. Through facilities we've grown, um, we've uh, tripled what we've had, um, but we've got something like about 25,000 people registered in our system. Uh, mm-hmm. throughout the 14 years or so that have come in and played. And that doesn't include mums and dads and, and grandparents and all the spectators that have come in. Mm. Oh, so yes. it, it, we've got to, it's hard to put a number on everything, but um, we, 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 we've, we, and we keep on growing. Even through this isolation here, we've been pretty much closed down for four months, yeah. which uh, isn't great if you love playing. And I really miss playing more than running the business, to be honest. Oh, yeah. You know, I've got a team, a social league team called the Hammers that every Thursday was, uh, you know, something I really look forward to. And that's, I'm not doing that now. So, um. Um, there's a lot to enjoy about futsal. I mean, it's a very fast paced environment and um, it allows you to get heaps of touches on the ball. And that's something that I really enjoy. Um, can shoot from anywhere as well, which is a bonus. So, yeah, there's not much to not like about futsal. So very much the technical side of the game, but also the shooting side. Yeah, literally everything. The shooting side, probably more than anything. And how are you in front of goals? Sorry? How are you in front of goals? I'd like to think I'm pretty good in front of goals. I mean, my track record hasn't been too bad. So, yeah, I'd like to think I'm pretty good in front of goals. Well, we'll definitely be watching tonight to see how that goes. Hopefully I can put a few away tonight. I absolutely love Peter's vision and philosophy for serious futsal and futsal Oz, And it ultimately shows why it succeeded where others have failed and fallen. I mean, it's close to probably 20, 20 years or 16 years. Not correct on the maths but it's still running and I think the oil is his oyster and it's going to be amazing to see what happens next and what growth and what introductions happens and it's something I think it's definitely worth keeping an eye on. Um, people often ask me what what is a sport what makes a sport yeah. and um, it's a good it's a very good question because sport is something that you you, you, you know you, it's competitive first of all you've got to be competitive in a sport um, it's got a interest um, people outside of the sport or people that are not in, in on the court. So for me, a sport gets bigger by the amount of people that want to watch it. Mm-hmm. And I think high-level sports all over the world yeah. have got great fan bases. Exactly. So a, fan, a, a sport's not taken serious until people want to really watch it. That's it. So yeah. that's what the entertainment factor is. We're not going to get anyone to watch futsal if it's boring. Now, we'll get pe- plenty of people to play or use it as um, a training tool, tool for football. Mm-hmm. But to become a standalone sport of its own, you need to attract fans to uh, tune in, to, to come into the stadium, to um, you know invest their, 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 their... All right. Well, we thank you so much for um, speaking to us today. And um, we can't wait to see the direction that football Oz, uh, futsal Oz um, goes within the next decade again, and hopefully we'll be seeing them in New South Wales, Queensland, and all over the other states.
Thank you, Hannah. Appreciate your time and uh, stay safe. And uh, yeah, anytime, uh, look forward to uh, having a chat again. Thank you, awesome. Peter. Thank you. Thanks, Rahid. Cheers. Awesome, mate.